Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing y'all how to do image tracing using your own drawings. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the picture that you want to use to trace. And you can get tracing paper from anywhere, even from places like Rite Aid, Walgreens, in the stationery section. Get you some cheap tracing paper. Now I got mine in a, a pad. I had like 50 sheets or so in a size 11 by 14 and I just cut it down to 8 by 10 size of the same size as this sketchbook here. Next I'm going to use a marker but make sure it doesn't smudge. I'm using the Bic Market Fine Point Permanent Marker. Markers like this one, they smudge easily and you don't want it to smudge because then it's going to appear when you um, do the tracing and illustrator and if you're afraid you're gonna mess up you can trace over this image in pencil first and then do it over with the um, marker but I'm just gonna use the marker and carefully trace over the drawing you know just take your time with it there's no need to rush through this I'm gonna make sure it's perfect so that there's no errors when you um, trace it in Illustrator. This drawing has um, eyelashes here, but I'm not going to trace over that with the marker because it's going to show up messy when I do it in Illustrator. You can always correct it when you put it on the file. It's just that it's much easier to have everything right and proper right now instead of fixing everything when you start working on the final design so that there's less things to fix Oop. yeah see what I did make sure you don't press your hand on the thing yeah make sure your um, hand doesn't touch the marker because this marker it, it dries quicker than the other one if you're like me and you tend to rest your hand on something while you draw. I know how you feel and sometimes you get print marks on your stuff. And I do know how to um, not put my hand on it but it's hard. It's, it's a habit. Now that that's done, this might show up when you put it in the Adobe Illustrator file and that might make it a little bit harder to edit. So then what you can do is use whiteout and that's what I'm gonna use right now. There's different kinds of whiteout but I'm just gonna use this one. This one has extra coverage. That's when you really don't wanna see the mistakes that you put. Don't go ham. Just cover what you don't want to show. And then if you do cover something that you didn't mean to put white out over, let the white out dry and then go over it with the marker. Yeah, I do this so good, but when I do tutorials, I end up messing up and that's probably a good thing so that I can show you what happens if you mess up. So now that it's done, it should look like this. I'm gonna let that dry. Yeah, dry pretty fast. And I just go over it with the marker. Okay. And now you're gonna scan it. You could take a picture of it with your um, camera, or camera phone, if you don't have a scanner. But it's best to use a scanner if you have one. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then after you scan it, then it'll be ready to edit. I'll be back. Okay, so I scanned the image, and uh, since it's not connected to my laptop, I used my computer, scanned it. Then I, you can either use a flash drive or send it to your email and then download it. So I did that. Now it's on my laptop, and I'm going to name this winter feeling 
I'm just gonna make it custom and let's see the file was 8 by 10 you can have bleed if you want but this is enough and if you print you see in YK if you're doing it digitally you use RGB okay. that's all right since it's just for screen this time I went to RGB but if it's for digital then you don't need bleed settings bleed is for when you print I just left it there to show you what it looks like so now edit the artboard over here now the width for this should be 8 and the height should be 10. I'm going to open the document file. I'm going to place and it's in my download since I didn't use my flash drive. Place it, align it to the corner, boom, and it's done. And now, I mean, once you hit preview, it already traces it. So now that's done, you can expand it, and I'm going to use the direct selection tool to select this rectangular shape outside of the drawing so best way to do that is to use another layer make a rectangle align it with the bleed if you want to print it put that underneath the drawing layer and put it to whatever color you want um, there's a lot of options here, a lot of swatches. These are all of them. Um, I'm going to go to the gradient, sky. You can rotate the gradient, adjust the gradient too, like how much you want to be dark, how much you want it to be light. And adjust to it go. And if you don't want it to move or get in the way while you do the drawing, you can either press the I button, which gets rid of, like you can't see it, or you can, if you want to see it, just lock it so it won't move. To color it in, use the live paint bucket tool. So, click this, my paint bucket, then you see the different color options it gives you here. You can select the arrow keys, left or right, to pick one that you want, and you see it's going through the different colors. And if you go up and down, if you look at the right in the swatches panel, you'll see it going through the color options over there. So, I'm going to go to this color and color in the face, no, color in the skin, and since it's showing all the paths, it's kind of hard to see everything, so just zoom in, I press command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out, and if you have a PC like me, it's control plus or control minus. Whoops. See, sometimes it's hard to get in the little spaces. See, when you click on the outline of the drawing, the whole thing turns that color. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't. Z. You have a PC, it's Control Z to undo something. 
But what I'm going to do is make another layer. And it's also good to name your layers. There we go. Pencil tool. And I'm going to draw. Well, not like that. They don't have to be perfect. So just draw this. You can always edit how it's drawn. Like edit the path. And you can use the smooth tool to smooth out the path. Like so. But anyway, I'm just going to move this. And I'm going to put it behind layer one. That looks kind of cool, actually. Hmm. I'll zoom back in. Let's edit the eye. Okay. Direct selection tool. Why is it not clicking that? Edit this eye part with the pencil, pencil tool, zoom a little more, and edit the eye. Can you imagine if I would have traced the eyelashes? This is what I was saying, it was going to be a hot mess if I would have traced those eyelashes. Enhance that. Oh no. Okay, that's a little better. Let's fix that more. No. No. Work with me. Alright, I'm just gonna click this and there you go. Nice. And let's see if we can fix this hand. You can also use the zoom in tool right here. I didn't think it would mess up this much. Well, not mess up, but I didn't think it would look like this. But we can fix that. Get the pencil tool. Oh, you can also use that, you see these points? You can adjust that by clicking the direct selection tool. You can click on the points of the path and move, move them wherever you want. But I'm gonna use the pencil tool to adjust it the way that I like. And if you don't remember exactly what the original drawing looked like. You can just look at it near you for reference or you can go back to the layers. Oh, if you have the original scanned, you can, okay, what I should do, let me see if I can place it. I'm gonna place or what? Alright. You can use it as a reference. You could have duplicated this copy right here and then use the copy to image trace. That I'm working on. So I'm gonna create another layer and move that. I'm gonna move this to that layer right here. And I'm gonna put it very back. And I don't wanna see it, so I'm gonna move it. But if I need it for reference, I can just look at it. You can also cover that. I mean, every little thing you do doesn't have to be based off of what you drew. 
the circle. Well, first, make sure you're in the right layer. Name it. Edits. But since this is supposed to be behind the coat, and I want that circle to be in front of the coat, move this here. And then, the selection tool. Well, that just moves it. So, get the pen anchor point tool and create an arch out of it and increase the size of this let's go so i'm going to do in a minute Let me just see how that looks okay go here for the stroke and the weight you can increase this way you can type one in if you want but uh, let's see two two should be good Symbol. Go here to symbols. You go to the nature and find the snowflakes. I use both of these snowflakes. Drag them on to the screen. Change the size of it using the shift and button and dragging it to whichever size and then placing it wherever I think it fits. And then I copied it by pressing um, option drag. That's it. Okay, and this is what it looks like. So if you want to print it, well first let's save it and put it in the one drive documents if you're using whatever version save it to the version you have okay and remember from the last video you want to save for web you go here if you want to print it do not save it as JPEG, uh, PNG, GIF, don't save it as that. Save it as a PDF. So let's save a copy. So I hope you found this helpful and you can use it for anything that you want to do, whether it's for the holidays or any sort of project you're working on. But I do have some holiday DIYs coming up and I hope that you'll find those useful because I know a lot of us we can't afford to buy certain things so we make them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye!